The era of the Raptor is nearing its end. This formidable air fighter once ruled the sky with an unbeatable force, but something more powerful and dangerous has been developed, the Quiet X-59. The supersonic silent aircraft is designed by NASA to usher in a new age of faster-than-sound travel with minimal sonic boom, sparking curiosity among aviation lovers worldwide. Can the X-59 truly surpass the legacy of the Raptor? What exactly makes this new aircraft more formidable than the fifth generation F-22 Raptor? Join us as we explore the advanced technology and capabilities of the X-59, an aircraft designed to replace the Raptor. The Lockheed Martin X-59 Quest, short for Quiet Supersonic Technology, is an experimental supersonic aircraft being developed by Skunk Works for NASA's project to reduce sonic booms. While the problems associated with the loud noise that accompanies hypersonic aircraft when breaking the sound barrier has been previously recorded with extremely fast aircraft and led to a halt in the production of these aircraft, the X-59 has proven that there's little to no limitation in terms of technological advancement. The development of this X-59 began in February 2016 when Lockheed Martin got a contract to design a plane, hoping it would be ready to fly by 2020. They were going to test a small model of the plane in a wind tunnel from February to April 2017 and planned to finish the first design review in two months' time from April. NASA asked for proposals in August 2017, and while three companies were interested, only Lockheed Martin ended up submitting a bid. NASA proceeded to give Lockheed Martin a $247.5 million contract to design, build, and deliver the low-boom X-plane by late 2021. In 2018, the U.S. Air Force told NASA they called the demonstrator the X-59 Quest ST. By October, NASA Langley finished three weeks of wind tunnel tests on a small model, testing how it behaved at different angles and speeds. They tested things like stability, control, and airflow using lasers, building on what they already knew from past tests and computer simulations. The low-boom X-plane is 99.7 feet long, with a wingspan of 29.5 feet and a maximum takeoff weight of 32,000 pounds. Powered by a General Electric F414 engine, it can reach speeds of up to Mach 1.5 and cruise at Mach 1.42 at an altitude of 55,000 feet. Its cockpit, ejection seat, and canopy come from a Northrop T38, while its landing gear is from an F16. The engine, equipped with an afterburner, generates 22,000 pounds of thrust. By using a long, slender design and special canards, the aircraft minimizes the sonic boom, reducing ground noise to about 75 decibels, roughly as quiet as shutting a car door. Compared to the much louder Concorde, the engine's intake is on top of the plane to further reduce noise, although airflow issues remain a challenge. Due to the plane's long pointed nose, the cockpit has no forward visibility so the X-59 uses an advanced vision system. A 4K camera with a wide-angle view and enhanced flight vision system will replace traditional forward visibility. Collins Aerospace is providing the avionics, including a special system to visualize the boom and infrared sensors for landing. After making sure it's safe to fly at the Armstrong Flight Research Center, NASA did a test to check the sound pattern of the shockwaves. They also plan to fly over U.S. cities to test how safe and quiet the X-59 is and see how people react. This information could help regulators decide if it's okay for supersonic planes to fly over land. Beginning from November 5, 2018, NASA planned to do tests over two weeks to get feedback. They'd make up to eight loud sounds a day in different places, which 20 noise sensors and 400 residents would track the residents would get $25 a week for helping. They also planned to fly over communities to see how people would react to the noise. This would be used to make a new rule about sonic booms at a meeting in 2027, and a decision about supersonic travel over land could be made in 2028. NASA also recently announced that they installed the General Electric F414 GE100 engine on the X-59 at Lockheed Martin Skunk Works in Palmdale, California. This engine is 13 feet long and can produce 22,000 pounds of thrust. Lockheed Martin shared a video of the X-59 rolling out of a hangar on August 4, 2023. 
Then on January 5, 2024, Lockheed Martin said they would reveal the X-59 within a week, which happened on January 12, 2024. Despite the success of this supersonic aircraft, one question lingers. Does this aircraft really solve the major problem associated with supersonic flights? When a plane flies slower than the speed of sound, the sound waves it makes spread out in all directions. But when it goes faster than sound, the plane leaves its own sound behind. The sound waves squeeze together into one strong shock wave that starts at the front of the plane and ends at the back. When the strong shock wave reaches a person's ear, it makes a loud boom. This happens not just when the plane breaks the sound barrier, but as long as it's flying faster than sound. Anyone in a cone-shaped area under the plane can hear it. The X-59's design is meant to stop these shock waves from joining together. Instead, they spread out because of special shapes on the plane's surface. Also, the engine is on top of the plane instead of underneath, so the bottom stays smooth and doesn't send shock waves to the ground. Because of this, NASA thinks the X-59 will make only 75 decibels of noise when flying supersonic, which might sound like far-off thunder or someone closing a car door around the corner, which is more comfortable to the ears than the sound of an explosion. Some people might not even hear the boom, and if they do, it won't be very loud or startling because it will be spread out and not as loud as before. The plan for the research aircraft is for it to fly up 1.4 times the speed of sound, which would have produced a sonic boom in previous supersonic aircraft. Before that happens, the Quest team will do a bunch of test flights at Lockheed A.O. Martin Skunk Works. Then they'll move the plane to NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center in California, where it will be based. The important part of the program will start later in 2024, with a series of test flights over six different neighborhoods across the U.S. These neighborhoods were picked because they have different kinds of weather and geography. Nicole said this will be an exciting part of the project because they'll involve the public and get them interested in science. The plan is similar to an experiment done by the Federal Aviation Administration in 1964. They flew supersonic fighter jets over Oklahoma City many times to see how people reacted to the loud booms and just as you imagined, it didn't go well. Up to 20% of people were upset by the booms and 4% even complained and asked for compensation for damage. Nicole explained that they don't want to make the same mistake, so they'll first test the X-59 in a restricted area to measure the booms. Only when they're sure it's safe will they fly over neighborhoods, and they'll still be careful to keep the booms at a low level. Then after flying the X-59 over the chosen neighborhoods, NASA will talk to the people living there to see how they feel about the noise. They want to make sure that a 75 decibel boom is okay with them, which is the goal of the whole project. The information collected like this will be shown to the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration and regulators from other countries. NASA thinks that if regulations change, new supersonic planes could fly on routes that aren't allowed now, like from New York to Los Angeles, and cut the flight time in half. Aviation lovers worldwide also have questions relating to how the X-59 plans to take the place of the F-22 Raptor. But before we get into that, Let's explore the features of the stealth air fighter. The era of the F-22 began in the 1980s, when the United States Air Force needed a new fighter to fix potential mission problems. At that time, American officials knew that Russia and China were starting to improve their fighter programs. The Raptor gave the U.S. Air Force a big advantage, its ability to fly undetected, thanks to its small radar signature and twin thrust vectoring engines, made it highly maneuverable and the best in dogfights. As the Cold War heated up in the 1990s, Moscow and Washington became extremely competitive. They tested nuclear bombs over 1,700 times. When the nuclear bomb craze ended, air dominance became the new focus. Both sides built jets that were more armed, more agile, and faster, regularly breaking the sound barrier. Amid all this, the U.S. discovered stealth technology, Combining all these features into one fighter, the U.S. Air Force, with the help of major American defense companies, introduced the F-22 Raptor in 2005. After the Cold War ended and the Soviet Union collapsed, the need for the expensive F-22 decreased. In the early 2000s, the U.S. focused on the War on Terror and started developing the cheaper F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, which led to reducing F-22 production. Since 2005, the F-22 has never fired at another fighter. Despite its power, it hasn't been used much because by the time it entered service, the Cold War was over. 
The Soviet Union had collapsed a decade earlier, and Russia was too busy rebuilding to challenge the U.S. Even though the U.S. was involved in conflicts when the Raptor entered service, these conflicts were against non-state forces in places like Afghanistan, Iraq, and Somalia, which didn't have significant air power. So there wasn't a big need for an air-to-air -air fighter like the Raptor. However, the Raptor's lack of combat doesn't mean it was useless. On the contrary, it might be a key reason for the long period of world peace. Its unmatched abilities served as a deterrent to enemies of the U.S. If they crossed a line, they risked facing a fleet of F-22 Raptors, which could be their last encounter. The Raptor's stealth was a major factor in its superiority. Built to be invisible to radar and the human eye, it could strike targets before they even knew it was there. This invisibility comes from careful design, like hiding its hinges and shaping its airframe. It cools its leading edges and has flat thrust vectoring nozzles to reduce heat emissions and the threat of heat-seeking missiles. The Raptor is coated with radar-absorbent material and has a system that warns when its stealth needs maintenance. All these features ensure the Raptor has a radar cross-section as small as a steel marble, making it extremely hard to detect. Its design balances stealth and aerodynamic performance. Its edges and surfaces are carefully aligned and curved to minimize its radar visibility. The wings blend smoothly into the fuselage, which has four tail surfaces and special extensions along the inlets. The aircraft features various flight control surfaces, including flaps, ailerons, rudders, and moving horizontal tails. For speed braking, the ailerons go up, the flapperons go down, and the rudders move outward to create drag. The shape of the F-22 is optimized for a supersonic flight, with most of the fuselage volume ahead of the wing's trailing edge. The horizontal tails are attached to booms extending behind the engine nozzles. Weapons are stored inside the fuselage to maintain stealth. The aircraft has a refueling boom on its back, retractable landing gear, and an emergency tail hook. It also has systems for fire suppression and fuel tank inertia to enhance survivability. It has two Pratt & Whitney F-190 PW100 engines, each producing up to 35,000 pounds of thrust. These engines are placed close together and have thrust vectoring nozzles for excellent agility. They allow the fighter to reach a height of 50,000 feet, a top speed of Mach 2, and a range of 2,000 miles, more than halfway around the world. With these capabilities, the Raptor can fly very fast, high, and maneuverably, helping it evade ground me forces and survive on the battlefield. The F-22 has a modern cockpit with digital flight instruments. The head-up display shows key flight information, and there are six color LCD panels for additional data. Pilots use a force-sensitive side stick controller and two throttles for control. The canopy is 140 inches long, 45 inches wide, 27 inches tall, and weighs 360 pounds. It was redesigned because the original lasted only 331 hours instead of 800. Its radio functions are integrated into its systems rather than being separate hardware. It has a keypad for entering communication, navigation, and autopilot data. Two small displays show caution, navigation, and fuel data. The main display, located below the keypad, is used for navigation and situation assessment. Three secondary displays provide tactical information. The ejection seat is a common model used in Air Force planes with a central control. The life support system includes an oxygen generation system, protective clothing, and a breathing regulator. The clothing protects against chemical and biological hazards, G-forces, low pressure at high altitudes, and cold water immersion. After issues with hypoxia, the system was updated with an automatic backup oxygen system and a new flight vest valve. In combat, the ejection seat includes a modified M4 carbine. A fighter's avionics determine how intelligent the fighter is, and the Raptor was designed as the most intelligent of all, thanks to some key mission systems. These systems include the an alr 94 electronic warfare system with more than 30 antennas for passive detection and all-around radar warning receiver coverage, the AAQ-56 infrared and ultraviolet missile launch detector for full spherical infrared coverage, and the AN-APG-77 active electronically scanned array radar with a low observable active aperture electronically scanned antenna for track while scan capabilities in all weather conditions to lower interception probability. 
This radar changes frequencies more than a thousand times per second. This high frequency enables the Raptor to double as an electronic warfare system capable of overloading enemy sensors. All radar, communication, navigation, and identification information is processed into a combined tactical picture to enhance pilot situational awareness using two Hughes Common Integrated Processors, each capable of processing up to 10.5 billion instructions per second. And since the F-22 can also operate shockingly close to the battlefield, the fighter avionics can gather enough data to detect and identify threats and perform intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance tasks. Software with 1.7 million lines of code keeps the Raptor systems running smoothly. To keep its stealth, the F-22 usually carries its weapons inside. It has one main bay and two side bays. The main bay can hold up to six AIM-120C air-to-air missiles and 1,000-pound GPS-guided bombs. The side bays have two AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles with a top speed of Mach 2.5 and a range of 22 miles. There is also a 20 mm rotary cannon with 480 rounds in the right wing route. When stealth is less important, the F-22 can carry extra weapons on the outside, up to 5,000 pounds on each of its four underwing points. These features make the F-22 the best fighter jet even today. Its technology is so advanced that a law prevents it from being sold to other countries, not even close allies. Only the U.S. can use it. Each F-22 needs a three-week maintenance session every 300 flight hours. Although its stealth coatings were made to be tough and weather-resistant, they initially failed in rain and moisture when F-22 were sent to Guam in 2009. Stealth maintenance is very time-consuming, making up almost one-third of all maintenance efforts. More durable coatings are being developed to reduce this burden. Major maintenance is done at the Ogden Air Logistics Complex at Hill AFB, Utah, with extra care due to the small fleet size. In 2015, the Raptors were mission-ready 63% of the time, up from 40% in 2005. The maintenance hours per flight hour improved from 30 initially to 10.5 by 2009, better than the required 12 hours. By 2014, it took 43 man hours per flight hour. The mean time between maintenance or MTBM was initially 1.7 hours, but improved to 3.2 hours by 2012. By fiscal year 2015, the cost per flight hour was $59.106. According to the aviationists, the new fuel tanks are called the Low Drag Tank and Pylon. They were designed to be stealthier and more aerodynamic than the current 600-gallon tanks. The LDTP allows the Raptor to fly faster with external tanks and increases its range. The Pylons have smart rack technology for better ejection control. In its 2023 budget request, the U.S. Air Force highlighted that the F-22 LDTPs have advanced designs that increase range and endurance while keeping the aircraft lethal and survivable, which is essential for air superiority. The Urus system for the F-22 was thought to be canceled due to budget issues, but a recent photo suggests it might still be in the works. The Air Force has committed to spending over $9 billion to upgrade the remaining F-22 Raptors through the end of the decade. These upgrades will include the new fuel tanks, as well as new sensors and improvements to the fighter's stealth capabilities. These upgrades are partly to ensure the F-22 remains competitive against China's J-20 fighter and any other threat before the sixth generation aircraft is finally ready to be fully operational. Now to answer the question, the X-59 Quest is being developed by NASA primarily as a low boom supersonic aircraft for civilian use, rather than a military replacement for the F-22 Raptor. The only replacement for the Raptor is the next generation NGAD. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.